finally here. There it is. Today we're going to be reviewing the Robot Da Machine number 197 MS06 Zaku 2 anime version. Yes, this is a new release from uh, Bandai and is the second time that they have released the Zaku 2 in Robot Da Machine form. The first one was the Hardpoint system that came out a couple years back and um, for better or worse it uh, just didn't meet the needs of many fans. So now we have a new version and uh, like the name suggests this is the anime uh, styled version meaning it, it it looks a lot like the, the series, the original series. Anyways I'm very excited to crack this box open and show you guys what's inside but let's take a look at the box itself. Um, very nice packaging. Shows the Zaku right there. Looking badass. Figures right here. Nice window. Turning the box over. We see a lot of different action poses. Some of the features on the figure. And a lot of uh, Japanese writing that I don't understand. So yeah. Lovely, lovely little figure to have. It's an army builder, of course. Yeah. Very nice. Can't do, uh, can't, can't have enough army builder figures. Anyways, let's go ahead and start this review off with, uh, well, just looking at the figure itself. Here it is. Robot Damashi Zaku 2. Very, very nice. I like it a lot already. Yeah. Uh, I'm really astounded about, uh, uh how series accurate the Zaku 2 is. Like usually Bandai or Damashi figures they take a little bit of liberty in um, stylizing the figure but this is pretty much right on the money. Uh, if you saw my Dom Robot Damashi review it was pretty much accurate to, to a T as far as I saw. There was there, there was one thing that you know I raised an eyebrow to but it was really insignificant. Uh, but yeah, this figure is really, really cool. It's a nice uh, light green avocado color uh, to the arms and legs and head. And then a darker uh, camo kind of green uh, for the torso and uh, skirt armor. And then a nice black for the chest and the knees and the elbows that you can see right there. Taking a look at the back. Very, very cool. And of course, nice little pink mono eye right up there. I love this figure. I'm already in love with it. I'm so happy. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the accessories. Now, besides the closed fist or somewhat closed fist that you receive on the figure when it's in the package, you also get a number of different hands, and here they are. I've gone ahead and put them on the, uh, I guess this is like a hand rack that... Uh, is included with all the anime figures now. Um, anyways, you get a pair of dynamic open hands right here. Very nice. And these are all made out of a, a soft uh, kind of plastic, so they pop on and off to, of the figure really easily. Um, let's see, moving on. These are, I believe, the... Uh, I think these are more like... They're trigger finger holding hands, but they're more subtle. Um, I say that because we have another pair of trigger finger holding hands right here but with the trigger finger more predominantly out so you get two pairs of uh, those um, and then last but not least you get these kind of dynamic uh, handle holding uh, hands I guess these are for you know when you hold the uh, bazooka handle um, for stabilizing it or whatever but yeah you get quite a few different pairs of hands uh, moving on you also get a uh, commander antenna slash dome cap that you simply just pop on and off the mobile suit if you want to switch between a uh, regular grunt suit or commander suit. It's very simple and I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Go ahead and pop it off like so. And uh, might as well show you this right now. Mono Eye does move. It is very reminiscent of the original, um, what is it? Not original, but the extended MSIA Zaku 2. So yeah, it's just paint uh, painted pink dot on some black plastic so it does move and then let's see if I can do this without messing it up or having to take the figure off of camera there it goes so now it's a commander type the commander type 
stumbling over my words. Excuse me, I'm just so excited about this figure. Anyways, moving on. We, of course, get the uh, Zaku 2 machine gun. Very lovely. And the clip does come off, like so. Putting it back. And the handle moves to the side. Nice little pink uh, paint applied for the scope. You can see that. Another weapon, of course, the Zaku Bazooka. Now, the scope moves from either side and is painted. Uh, the handles don't really move on them, except for uh, the stabilizing handle right here, but I'm mostly referring to the uh, trigger finger holding handle. Um, that doesn't move. It usually did, but yeah, not this time. Putting that to the side, we also get two different pairs of heat hawks. There's the unignited version where it's very short. Uh, it's just hard plastic and it has a small peg to insert into the Zaku side skirt. Right there, there's a nice little hole. It's very uh, oddly positioned. I don't like it, but uh, yeah, that's how it's, it rests on the Zaku. Very weird, I don't like it. But anyways, uh, we also get an extended or ignited heat hawk. Blade is turned on or whatever. Yeah, it's quite, yeah, it's really a lot bigger. It's almost half the size of the Zaku itself. Oops, there we go. Yeah, so it's just weird. Um, so yeah, you have that. You also get two of these missile pods that go on both sides of the Zaku. And I'll show you a really cool thing with those later. There we go. And uh, to go along with those, you get the braces that go over the legs, like so. You also get a uh, Magella top cannon gun. I think that's what it was called. Nothing moves on the, on the gun itself, um, but there's two different colors of plastic. This kind of lighter, darker, lighter shade of green. And then you have the kind of gun metal uh, base for the gun itself. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you do get some effect parts for the missile pods. Two missiles with smoke trailing behind them. So very, very cool. I like those. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, with the other weapons, you get a, a pair of crackle grenades that come with a holding canister or um, whatever. Again, a nice little peg to insert to the Saku skirt armor. And yeah, these crackles are cool. A little smaller than uh, what I remember. Last but not least, oh no, second to last, you get this kind of, uh, well I don't even know what this is, but it was featured on a lot of the photos for the action figure itself. So you need a Robot Damashi action base to use this and display it. And then you get three of these little connectors for the weapons to be held on the mobile suit. So, a lot of stuff. I just wanted to take a moment to show you guys a really cool feature that these missile pods come with. Uh, just put one down. Now each pod has three missiles and they actually are removable. Really really awesome uh, idea to do with this. Um, I don't think they've ever been done with the figures at all. No actually never been done. So uh, what you want to do is you want to grab one of the effect parts and you actually want to push it out uh, at the tip of the missile. So just go ahead and push into the box where the missiles are being held and you'll push out the missile itself. So there's the missile, you get three of these in each uh, missile pod. And yeah, they're really, really neat. It's a cool little thing to, you know, see. And then uh, with those out, you go ahead and put in one of the effect parts and boom, you got a missile pod coming, or a missile coming right at uh, a mobile suit. Uh, that's how it looks, coming at a a mobile suit yeah so that's a cool little feature i really like that uh going on to these uh missile effect parts now they're meant for the missile pods i understand but you can use it in the bazooka as well uh pretty much any bazooka there it goes it starts. there is a hole inside the bazooka barrel where you can fit i think the effect parts um that came with the char zaku 2 i don't have that yet so um this is this you know an obvious one to try and it looks pretty okay I mean size wise I would imagine these missiles would come out of this bazooka anyways and not something way bigger but um, whatever really really cool I like it yeah it's awesome so that these are really cool little features that um, whoops Bandai has been doing with the anime version robot Damashis putting little effect parts and I really appreciate that a lot yeah Really cool. So let's go ahead and move on to the articulation on the figure. 
there's quite a bit of articulation on this figure. Starting with the head, we have full 360 rotation, but uh, I'm not going to do that just because the cords get in the way. The cords are made out of a nice little rubbery plastic, so uh, don't worry about them breaking. But yes, it does turn 360. Um, that being said, there is a really cool little feature with the neck joints. You can actually pull the head up and it does allow the Zaku to look a little bit taller. It looks a little bit more accurate, like it's not just like squatting down. It looks like a like a potato or something like when it's like that, but with the neck uh, out a little bit more, it looks a lot more accurate. Uh, then it does make it a lot easier to turn the head 360 and if I turn the back right there you can see that there's a nice covering for the uh, neck or the innards of the neck and then you see that it's a ball joint connecting the head to the neck and then the necks connected to like this hinge that lifts the the head up and down so really cool there uh, I already showed you their articulation with the mono eye that's uh, nothing to really go over again um, there is some articulation in the chest the chest is allowed to crunch forward and go right back so good range of motion for when you want to hold weapons moving on to the arms the shoulder armor well on this side it's kind of in the way it does move out a little bit that much but yeah it's still in the way you can only lift the arm about that much there is full 360 rotation at the top of the bicep and then you get rotation in the elbow joint as well speaking of the elbow though you do get double articulation one joint right there and one joint right there so there's that, and then 360 in the hand, because it's a ball joint, yay! Uh, with this shoulder armor, uh, with the shield, sorry, this can move to the side, like that. So it can get out of the way, or you can rotate it like that, and then you can lift the hand about that high. So really, really cool. Torso can actually pull up, or be uh, uh, pulled forward about that much, so it can hunch over. So really cool. I don't think it can go 360 at the uh, tor lower torso. Anyways, moving on to the skirt armor. Yes, all connected to uh, on the front by a ball joint. Does allow the legs to kick up about that high. So not too bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. You can see the inside of the legs right there. And it is on a ball joint. And then there's a hinge that swings forward the leg like that. And uh, the other side skirt right there is on a hinge as well. So that, that doesn't come off. That's really cool. I already showed you the uh, hip articulation. So moving on to the knee, double articulation there. And there is a portion of plastic that gets slide, that slides up, so it's not in the way. Uh, toe articulation, ankle pivot goes about that high, bends down about that much. And if you pull the toe out, a eh, little bit more articulation. So not too bad for this uh, figure. No real articulation in the back for the thrusters, but that's okay. But all in all, a lot of great moving parts. I like it a lot. Now I just wanted to take a moment to show you guys what happens when you bend the knee and use a double articulation like this, uh, lifting that skirt up a little bit. So uh, this is made out of nice soft rubbery plastic. And uh, when, you, uh, when you move the uh, knee, when you make it bend and everything this plastic just really slides in and, and back into the mobile suit's legs so that was really smart on Bandai's part um, and just to show you guys a closer look at this foot you do have to pull it out when you want to use the toe articulation and it does bend quite a bit so it's not too um, too much hard work but then you gotta pop it back in so yeah then it's one solid piece um, one other thing was that there there's this little hatch in the back, and I guess this isn't really articulation, but I might as well show it because it does move. There's this little hatch in the back of this mobile suit on the, on the skirt armor in the rear, and you lift that little flap open, and it allows you to store the, uh, I guess, uh, uh, little, where is it? Here it is. Uh, one of these little things, I think it would be, does this fit? No, actually it doesn't. What does this do? Oh, oh I know what it is. It's for the uh, Damashi stand. So you can lift this flap up and then you can attach the Damashi stand, I guess, to this little peg right here, or peg hole, and you can hold the, the, the Zaku up like so. Um, it's really funny. I didn't think that's what it was for because, oh, let me close that. Uh, there's another hole right here that I thought, you know, was for the Damashi stand, but no, you get two points of a, you know, two points 
that you can uh, throw that on. So that's really cool. Another little thing was that at the shoulder, it actually does pop out further uh, than just the shoulder uh, connecting to the torso uh, allows. So there's this articulation that pops out of the mobile suit's torso, and then there's the shoulder joint that actually pops out of the torso itself. So a lot of movement and engineering is going on in this figure, and uh, yeah. I'm very happy with it. It's so cool. I, I mean, they went into, they went above and beyond for this figure. So very neat. And just in case you wanted to see a closer look at the mono eye movement, again, it's just a simple piece of plastic that goes inside the head, and there's a little tab that you pull left or right. And yeah, it's just a piece of painted plastic. I kind of was hoping it would be like an actual mono eye, just like the Dom had, but sadly we don't have that. Ah, well. The next thing I wanted to show off is just exactly how the missile pods are attached to the leg. It's actually a little difficult. It took me a few uh, few tries to figure it out, but um, as far as I know, here's the pig that is on the missile pods. You can probably see that. Yeah, there it is. Now, what you want to do is, uh, unlike the original MSIA version, um, the peg goes on the bottom of the pod, and you insert it like that. So there's the pod on the leg, simply put. But no, you have to put this little brace on, of course, because how on earth is the pod going to stick on there? Uh, now that is the difficult part. This brace actually comes apart, like so. And there's actually two or three peg pegs that are on the inside. There's one on this side right here somewhere. I can't really see it on camera. And then uh, there's two more on the inside of the brace that goes on the back of the leg of the mobile suit. So there's two more. And if you look on the leg, there's one hole, two holes, three holes. So the brace is all held on to, uh, by these holes. Um, and yeah, so when you figure that out, you just have to basically you put the brace on first, you clamp it on, and then you put the um, missile pod over it. And that's essentially how it just pops on. Uh, it's pretty secure on there and they don't come off very easily. And uh, then we move on to the little weapon attachments for the bazooka. And I, I don't know, can you use it for this rifle? I don't think you can use it for the rifle. Anyways, you take these little attachments and uh, the cool thing is they have a hard, like kind of a hard point system thing going on with this Zaku too. Um, but it's not so much all over the place. It's more of like where it needs to be and that's cool I, I, oops, I threw the bazooka. I don't like how they did it with the original Zaku that they released It was just too many holes all over the place. Anyways, there's a shallow hole um, or peg insert on this bazooka uh, Let's see if I can get this in one try. Yeah, there it goes. Nope. Nope There it goes. So there it is. It's inserted into the little holder for the weapon and now the Zaku has a bazooka and a missile pod attached so yeah I like it a lot uh, very simple very clean and neat and that's very much appreciated for this figure and here's a closer look again here's the holes where you insert the peg for uh, holding the weapon and then there's the bazooka and then there's the missile pod with the brace on yeah. So like I said before, very neat and clean. And here's a nice closer look at the figure with the commander antenna on. And I kind of like it with this uh, with this antenna more than just a regular grunt suit looking head. Looks more um, not so cartoonish, I guess you could say. I just wish there was a little bit more uh, paint apps all over the figure. Um, I don't know, I'm probably just missing the old MSIA or extended MSIA version where there were warning stickers all over the figure or something. But uh, let's take a look at the back. I also noticed that the thrusters are really small, but uh, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, it's not too bad. There it is. The Robot Damashi Zaku 2. Let's go ahead and move into final thoughts. And the final pose of this figure will be from one of my favorite moments featuring Azaku, uh, War in the Pocket, 0080, when um, 
Zaku fought off the Alex. Now, this isn't the same Zaku, but, you know, it's just the same pose. I liked it a lot. Anyways, uh, let me put the camera down here. Yeah, not so great of a pose now, huh? Anyways, uh, let's go into final thoughts, and I just got to say all the great things about this suit. First off. Uh, finally, it's a well-rounded representation of the Zaku 2 that us uh, fans of Xeon Mobile Suits have been asking for for years since the release of the original um, uh, Damshi Zaku 2 that we got. There's no uh, signs of bulkiness or whatever stylization they were going for with that suit, or that figure, sorry. Um, there are a few hard point system, or a few hard points, not hard point system, um, but a few hard point holes uh, that really go unnoticed, meaning the the ones on the backpack, and I, I guess if you want to consider the ones on the shield and the and the, the legs and the skirts, then fine, consider them. But yeah, really, there's no signs of um, any of that influence from the last version of the Zaku. Um, that being said. The amount of accessories you get is um, just right. The bazooka, the top cannon, the machine gun, uh, the heat hawks. Even though I'm I'm not really a fan of the um, uh, deactive version, and the active version, they're just the scale is just really weird for me. But I can get over it or used to it. Um, the missile pods. The fact that the missiles come out that is just so awesome. Really, really cool. I like it a lot. It's really overall a well-made and um, uh, well-accessorized figure. Um, that being said, there are a few things I, I had um, some gripes for. And I don't know if it was just my figure, but starting off with the uh, commander antenna. The antenna comes off very easily. I don't know if it's just a lack of glue on there or what, but it just comes off really easily. So I have to grab it from the bottom uh, of the lid or of the head and then pull it off so that's not a big thing uh, another is the kind of cartoonish look I first um, got off this figure it's I'm not really a fan of it but I'm slowly and more getting used to it um, that being said the Dom has that the guff is gonna have that when that's released and I'm sure the the Gundam or the original Gundam and the Char Zaku 2 there they all have that style uh, to the figures and it's just something I'll have to get used to um, that being said I'm not a huge fan of this color or this choice of greens um, I know we could have gone a little bit darker or whatever but it's just uh, I kind of don't like it I wish it was just a, a tad darker just a tad um, another thing is that uh, what was I gonna say the mono eye I, this is all just nitpicky stuff now the mono eye I wish it was more along the lines of um, what the Dom had, where it was just a, a eye, and then it was on a like a piece of plastic that you would rotate um, and connected by a ball joint. That was pretty cool. I wish that was you know featured on this suit or on this figure. Other than that, this figure is actually like perfect, and I would give it a ten out of ten no matter what. Um, I bought six of these bad boys, so definitely this is an army builder. Uh, we're gonna be, I'm sure, getting variants of it. Um, I'm hoping to see a high mobility type or maybe a, a Zaku 1 soon. I, I don't know. But in any case, this is a win. I picked mine up at Ami Ami on pre-order. I spent around $35 to $40. I can't remember exactly, but I, I bought the max amount of 6 for this figure, and it is definitely worth it. If you're into army building, definitely get this figure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I don't think I've seen others. Hit the like, dislike, comment, subscribe, do everything. Whatever you want to do, I don't care. I just appreciate you guys watching the video. Have fun uh, with your Zaku too, and catch you guys later. See ya.